So this is an example of granuloma annulari, and this was a punch biopsy taken from a middle-aged female with uh, purple-coloured plaques, mostly on the legs in this case, and the clinical query was for either granuloma annulari or sarcoidosis. So here we have the punch biopsy, and even on low power, you can see some of the typical features of granuloma annulari. So in these areas here and down here and over here, you've actually got multiple foci in the dermis of necrobiotic granulomatous inflammation, which creates these rather busy looking areas in the interstitium of the dermis. And if we go a little bit closer and have a look, in these areas, you can see that you've got these slightly pale coloured histiocytic cells here. And they're kind of wrapping themselves around the dermal collagen here and just starting to form this hint of this palisade around this area. And the collagen in here is just starting to show a bit of degenerative features. It's slightly thicker and slightly more eosinophilic in these areas. And there's also some areas where it's just starting to degenerate and almost look slightly um, stringy and mucoid. We'll take a look at another one down here. Again, you can see a similar appearance here. So these pale histiocytic cells nicely wrapping themselves around these collagen bundles here in these areas of necrobiosis. So this is quite typical really of what you see these focal areas of necrobiotic granulomatous inflammation in the dermis as well as that you often see although it's less specific but as well as the areas of necrobiotic granulomatous inflammation you very often also get a um, perivascular lymphocytic inflammatory infiltrate as well sometimes you can see um, some eosinophils mixed in there as well uh, quite hard to see many in this example, but not infrequent to see some eosinophils as well mixed in with the, with the infiltrating granuloma annulari. So this is a fairly typical example of granuloma annulari of the skin. In terms of differential diagnoses to consider in these cases, well, perhaps the main thing are other types of necrobiotic granulomatous dermatitis, one of the main ones to consider might be necrobiosis lipoidica, particularly in biopsies that may have originated from the leg or in particular the shin. And the main distinguishing features between granuloma annulari and necrobiosis lipoidica histologically is really the distribution of the necrobiosis. So here in granuloma annulari, typically you tend to get um, rather smaller um, multiple foci of necrobiosis in the dermis. Whereas in necrobiosis lipoidica, the necrobiosis tends to be much more extensive and arranged in rather more parallel tracks within the dermis, often arranged parallel to the epidermis. And the associated inflammatory infiltrate in necrobiosis lipoidica, as well as the lymphocytes, quite characteristically, you tend to also find um, plasma cells quite easily, which you tend not to see so much in granuloma annulari. One other differential diagnosis just to mention, as it can sometimes show him a similar histology and is certainly something you wouldn't want to mistake for a benign inflammatory process like granuloma annulari, is a malignant tumour epithelioid sarcoma, uh, which typically affects um, young middle-aged adults, often on... Um, proximal, uh, sorry, distal extremities, often around the um, hands and wrists or feet. And this is actually a malignant sarcoma, uh, whereby the malignant cells often tend to palisade around areas of necrosis and can quite closely mimic the appearance of granuloma annulari. But in that instance, rather than being benign histiocytic cells, the cells are actually malignant cells, which usually do look more atypical and mitotic. Um, but if there's any doubt in your mind as to the possibility of epithelioid sarcoma, the easiest thing to do is to throw some immunohistochemistry at the case. And in epithelioid sarcoma, one would expect the cells in that, the malignant cells, 
to stain with cytokeratins and also typically co-express CD34 and to have lost INI1. Whereas in granuloma granulari, these cells are all histiocytes, so would usually stain for histiocytic markers such as CD68 or CD163 and not stain with cytokeratins or CD34.